one that's, uh, if you look in your little pamphlet here, there's the map. The Willapuchi is the green line that goes way up to the upper right. It's uh, this one up here. And we have a representative from the Willapuchi right here in the room. Cindy Lake lives right at the top end of the Willapuchi. I believe she personally produces it. <laughs> 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 and Gordon will remember that uh, he and I sat with her and her daughter up at Roswell more than a year ago talking about, we're going to do this thing called walls, and here she is. Okay, so we have these, we, we only mentioned four rivers in the description. There's actually more than that. There's the Little Gucci, Little Gucci, Little Rivers. There's also something called the Alapapuchi River down in southeast Lowndes County and southwest Eccles, goes into the Alapaha. And there's another one called the New River, which uh, it, here on the blog, there's the Alapaha, there's the Kuchi. Here on the blog, you can find all sorts of maps like this. This is the blog of the Wall website. So if you're interested in all that kind of stuff, okay, but what do we do? We have outings, for example, where we try to get people to go out and actually see this stuff. I mean, most people don't realize the Alapaha River is a Georgia canoeing and paddling guide. On the national system of rating rivers, the Alapaha River rates an A+. Plus. That's the highest rating they've got. For comparison, the Altamaha, I believe, is a C. Now why is the Alapaha rate so highly? Because you can go for miles and miles on the Alapaha and see nothing but nice teak colored water and mostly native species like, like we did uh, recently. Now our very first outing on the Alapaha, we started one of our first uh, <coughs> sort of side occupations. Who will dunk in the river first? We had two winners right away. <laughs> Heather Frazzle and uh, Dave. Dave, was that your first time ever in a canoe on the river? I believe it was. Well, on the river and in the river, yes. <laughs> yes, first time ever, completely under. And uh, after that, one you know, other thing we did was a paddle race on the Little River at Green Bingham State Park, where we had quite a few people show up. I think it was 28 boats. And our winner at that one was Gretchen. Best swimmer. That's it. <laughs> She won a prize. They said it was for a um, uh, female single kayak, right? Mm -hmm. It was really the best swimmer. <laughs> and we went on the Wipakuchi River recently down uh, where it goes actually across the Florida line and then back up. And we did not actually have a winner down there. It's uh, not this area down here, but that was very interesting. Did you know there's rapids on the Wipakuchi River? I didn't. We did. We went on a around. And um, we have also done things like we had Janice Ray do a reading from some of her books. If you don't know who Janice Ray is, you're missing a treat. She writes about uh, longleaf pine ecology. She's one of the founders of the Altamaha River Keeper. She writes poetry. She's a professor of seeds. She does seed saving. Okay, and we do seminars like this. We also write letters. We wrote a letter to the Lyons County Commission about public access to the Alapaha River. There was, I say was because they closed it, only one road that went to the Alapaha River in Lyons County that you get to publicly. So in one sense we lost, but on the other hand we recommended that they make a park instead at USA 4. And they seem to actually be moving along to doing that. They're talking about a 15 acre park with a pavilion, with a boat ramp. Uh, they're going to use false money for this, but you know, still, if they do that, that will count as a win. We wrote a letter to the Georgia Public Service Commission recommending that they require Georgia Power to do more solar power. What's that got to do with water? Well, uh, uh, we heard that uh, agriculture uses a lot of water, but what actually uses even more water in point locations? Power plants. Plant Fogel, the nuclear plant on the Savannah River, uses more water than the agricultural region completely surrounding it. If they finish adding those two new nuclear
nuclear reactors if Plant Mogul would use more water than all of that. Plant Hatch on the Altamaha uses up quite a bit of the Altamaha water. Now we are lucky in our particular watersheds of we don't actually have any of those power plants in our watersheds. However, the Palatama River is unfortunately almost also famous for having mercury pollution. Where does that mercury come from? Some of it comes out of the ground, but some of it apparently also comes from the air from Plant Sharer, Gold Plant Sharer, just a little north of Macon. So we do have an interest in what if we had a cleaner source of power that didn't produce mercury and didn't use a lot of water. We do solar power here in sunny South Georgia. So we wrote a letter to Georgia Public Service Commission and Gary read it to them. We have video, Gary Gentry there. And we won. Uh, we have mean a whole bunch of people, the Georgia Sierra Club, for example, and a bunch of other people. Because the PSC required um, another more than 500 uh, megawatts of solar power from Georgia Power. That's a good thing. Okay, we wrote a letter to the uh, Jekyll Island Authority because they're trying to claim that uh, marsh is land. That seems silly. Why would they care? Because there's a 65-35 rule which is a state law that says only 35% of the land area can be developed. Well, if they can claim marshes land, they can develop for it. So if you'd like a Steve Jacob Island bumper sticker, we got some of these because the Steve Jacob Island group liked our letter. We wrote a letter to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Why would we care about them? Because of the basic issue that was what was the specific proximate cause of the formation of walls. Now, we have drought issues at, uh, in a drought. The Wipicoochee River near my house is the Wipicoochee Trickle. You can literally step across it. But in flood conditions, you get the opposite. Now, as Gordon Rogers has been known to say, we have not been having record rainfall. In fact, if you look at historical records of rainfall, this year has been about normal. Now, unless you're as old as I am, I'm 29, by the way, you don't remember what normal was. But my father used to talk about 30 years ago that rainfall even then wasn't normal. But what we are getting is record flooding. Today, the Wipicoochee Wastewater Treatment Plant <coughs> southwest of Valdosta is overflowing again into the Wipicoochee River. By again, I mean at least the fourth time this year. Record flooding, record overflows, record pollution. Add to that, Miles County had a sewer break that ran into the Wipicoochee River. You know, Miles County and Valdosta are now famous all the way to Florida because Wipicoochee goes into the Somali, goes into the Gulf of Mexico, and we're in the newspapers and the TV all the way down. I think it's really Tipton's fault. I don't know that water on that hill. <laughs> Okay, so the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was actually called in by the city of Valdosta to try to coordinate a watershed-wide flooding plan that had several meetings involving all the local governments, uh, Tift County Commissioners, Tift County City Council, Valdosta City Council, Miles County Commission, a bunch of others, and alphabet soup ranging from uh, FEMA at the federal level to FEMA at the state level, plus in Florida. Notice that the walls watersheds do not stop at the state line. They also go all the way down to Madison and Jasper. Okay, so what our letter to the Army Corps of Engineers was about, hey, we're the watershed group in this area, and we should be involved in this. So far we've gotten no answer, but we will pursue this. Um, so you heard that uh, the aquifer is a renewable resource, although we're mining it too fast to renew it. Well, it is, unless we put stuff in there that makes the water useless. The Wipicoochee River, just north of Valdosta, part of it goes into the aquifer. The Alapama River, south of Valdosta, part of it goes into the aquifer. And what else uses a lot of water? Uh, you may have heard about a chemical fire in Valdosta, like last week. 
it was in all the news. Uh, there was uh, Gretchen could see it from three miles away. We took pictures. It's an object called Permafix. What do they do? They quote remediate uh, toxic waste into fuel. What does that mean exactly? I don't know. Do they really remediate all of it? Where does the rest of it go if they don't? I would bet into the landfill in Lowndes County where we already have coal ash from TVA. Remember last year there was this big deal about a coal ash uh, pond that overflowed in Tennessee and they had to take the coal ash somewhere? Some of it went into four different landfills in South Georgia, both of the last year. Now where does, when the rain falls on that landfill, where does the runoff go? Into the Wittapusta River. And some of it is doubtless sinking down into the aquifer. There's also sterling chemical in Valdosta that sucks up hundreds of thousands of gallons of groundwater. So, uh, and then there's all the pesticides running off of you pigweed. We don't know how much. No one seems to have ever studied it directly. So there's all these kinds of things that are issues that we can pursue. Um, so, and as more water gets pumped out of the aquifer, and yeah, uh, the water level, the, uh, the basic groundwater level keeps sinking. My father's well on our property, I live on the same land I grew up with, was about 80 feet deep to start with. Then he had to put in a deep well, which was about 160 feet deep. Our well, which we put in six or seven years ago, is 260 feet deep. This is what's going on all around there. Okay, now what happens in that case? Often what happens is you get sinkholes. And for example, just a, a year or two ago, there was a sinkhole on the State Nation Road in Lyons County, which ate half the road. The county decided to try to fill it in. That didn't work. What did they do then? They did a change order for half a million dollars to move the road. Um, that's far from the only sinkhole, all those lakes near Lake Park. Those are basically sinkholes. And related to local governments, it's not just the state, it's also local governments even more. That's one reason that the Army Corps of Engineers is involved, to try to get the local governments to coordinate their codes to do something about this stuff. Here we have two examples of what not to do. This is a little development called Nelson Hill. I can't see it on this map, but in the middle of it is a pond, an artificial pond produced by, that scraped off the cypress swamp, put in a concrete spillway, dug out the middle, and used it to pile up the middle houses. This is, a, a, this is like a textbook example of what you don't want to do if you don't want more flooding. And this happened not very long ago. Right down the road, this is the zoning case from last week, I believe. This is a, something called Moody Family Housing. Moody, Moody Air Force Base. It's not actually Moody Air Force Base that wants it, it's the US Air Force, because they had this scheme for privatizing base housing throughout the country. The commandant at Moody Air Force Base asked to go look at this property. I was told he couldn't get on it. That's right, the commandant of the Air Force Base that this housing is supposedly for, couldn't get on the property to look at it. Mm -hmm. Why did he care? Because over on this side of the property, there's a sinkhole. And uh, if, if you follow this link, um, the, there, the uh, Air Force did an environmental assessment. The soil type under the sinkhole is the same soil as under this entire area of the first phase of the Moody family housing. And there has been, there's supposed to be a geotechnical study to find out what's under there. It hasn't happened yet. Who's supposed to do it? The developer. At Valdosta State University, there are people perfectly capable of doing this. Three of them showed up at the county commission meeting saying, well, we should do this. What did the county commission do? They approved the resign. Okay, I, I, I'm not, Picking on the Lyons County, oh yeah, okay, I am. I'm picking on the Lyons County Commission because they deserve it. 
But this is the kind of thing that goes on around here all the time, that the water issues are not really taken into account much by our local governments. And this is where if people show up and talk to the local governments, eventually maybe some change can be had. That uh, you know, access to the Alapahal River, if people haven't shown up, and a bunch of Walls people do, we packed the mission chamber for that thing, which doesn't happen very often. Okay, they closed the road, but now they're serious about making a park because people showed up. So if we can simply get people to show up, that would be a big deal. And that's, uh, oh yeah, the pipeline. In case you're not aware of this, there is a pipeline that's <coughs> apparently supposed to go from Anniston, Alabama to Orlando, Florida. You may have heard the name Anniston, Alabama before. If not, it's a town that's famous for Monsanto completely polluted it with PCBs to the extent that Earth affects are at record levels. Anyway, this pipeline is supposed to carry natural gas from Alabama to Florida to no benefit whatever for Georgia. <coughs> our local county commission in Miles County, their attitude is, not our problem. You're on your own. We don't even know where it goes. I've sort of been trying to find out by, I did an open records request to the county to find out which is their property. They got letters from the pipeline company, so I got a vague idea. Okay, who wants to bet that this is going to go through wetlands? <laughs> I'm going to bet that because I already have two natural gas pipelines on my property, and they go through my wetlands. And this is definitely a property rights issue and an externality issue. You run one of these things through the wetlands, it changes the hydrology. Okay, so yet another thing that's, that uh, walls could help deal with. All right, so that's mostly what I have to say. Some stuff that walls has dealt with, some stuff that walls could deal with. There's one other thing, which is walls has a board, which I've never seen an organization like this. Every single person on the Walls board is busy doing stuff. Karen was primarily responsible for organizing this conference, for example. She also runs the Invasive Species Center here that you'll hear about in a moment. Dave does so many things like going to the Georgia Water Coalition. I couldn't name them all. Gretchen is the treasurer and is busy videoing this and hopes I'll shut up soon. Gary wants to talk at the Georgia PSC and is our membership coordinator. And uh, Heather is our secretary and was first in the dunking class. <laughs> and Al Browning is going to talk to you next about water quality testing. Every single person on the board, I apologize for whoever I forgot, which I'm sure I did, does something. And you don't have to be on the board to do stuff. There's plenty of stuff to do. So that's what I have to say. Thank you.